Oh, y'all can do better than that. That was just beautiful. From, from the, that was beautiful. Beautiful. I, I see a coming together. I see a, I see a coming together. I, I, I see a pieces of puzzles coming together. I watch everything. I don't miss anything. There's a unity about the music. In that Patrice didn't think that she was so good that she couldn't relinquish the board. So that Brent could come over and play the board. But look, she didn't just sit idle by, but she left the pit and went to the choir. See, yeah. To, to help the choir where help needed to be. I see her coming together. And that's why it sounded so good. And, and then my sister, standing right here on this podium. Y'all can say what you want, but Tisa Nicholson know how to direct a choir. I, I mean, she know how she wanted to sound, what part she wants to do, and she worked that thing. I see her coming together. Listen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because see, can't nobody do that but God. We, we, can, we, can, we can negotiate, we can dictate, we can mediate, but at the end of the day, God going to have to say. God going to fix whatever needs broke. God's going to mend whatever's torn if you just let him do it. And I, I'm just, Lord knows, I'm, I'm happy. That blessed me. Y'all blessed me today. And, and, and that's not just today, but it was just something about today. Y'all blessed me. Can, can we just thank God one more time? Come on, y'all. Can we just thank God? I have enjoyed myself. I got full early, and I have enjoyed myself. There is a passage of scripture that I want to bless you as it has blessed me. I'm still a work in progress. But I do know that if I'm going to go any further, if I'm going to do any better, I've got to learn change is inevitable. This is not just for me, but this is for everybody in here. We've got to be willing to, to change. And change is not always bad. Now, don't get me wrong. We're going to find in a minute change is uncomfortable. But it was meant to be that way. But we got to understand if we're going to go any further, we got to make some changes. If we're going to get any better, we got to make some changes. Familiar passages of scripture, as I look at the lame man in Acts chapter 3, a very familiar passage of scripture, when you get there, most of you know the story. But in the book of Acts, third chapter, the story of Peter, John, and the lame man. Those of you that have your Bibles and those of you looking on the screen, in Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, here you'll find these words. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, beginning the ninth hour. And a certain man, laying from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. He gave heed unto them, expecting 
expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which set for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Thank you. I just want to use for a thought today. I'm better than this. I'm, I'm better than this. I don't care what my condition may be at this time. I don't care what my situation may be at this time. I've got to realize that when I really look at my life and look at where I am, I have to really realize I can do better than this. Because what happens with many of us is that even in the church today and even in our lives, we find ourselves being comfortable where we are. Everything's all right as long as, long as we got a roof over our head and as long as there's milk and bread. You know, we, we are all right, but, but there's more to life than milk and bread. There's more to life than a roof over your head. At some point, you ought to want to get to the point to where you truly not only make a difference in your own life, but you make a difference in the lives of others. When we look at the text today, we find a man who is comfortable in his, in his surroundings. He's comfortable in his life. And his ability to be comfortable has been hindered by the people he's been hanging around. Can I suggest to you today that if you're going to get better, and if you're going to realize that you're better than, than this, you got to also pay attention to the company in which you keep. Because there are some people that don't want to see you go anywhere and will do anything to make sure you stay right where you are. And so you have to be careful with the company that you keep because it can be those very people that hold you back from what God really has for your life. And it can be, it ain't got to be your next door neighbor. It can be somebody in your house. You got to be careful with the relationships you even have in your house. Because sometimes the relations in your house can be hindered. If you're not on the same page. If you look at the text, this man who has been going to this gate called beautiful. Notice how when... Luke writes this book. Notice he doesn't give a name to the ones who bring him to the gate. Notice how they are anonymous simply because they probably didn't want to be known because they had an agenda. Here is a lame man laying at the gate called Beautiful asking for money. He's lame. His ability to be mobile is limited. So his need for money would also be limited. It's quite striking to me that every moment these same two people get up, get dressed, go to the lame man's house, get him ready, lay him at the gate in the morning, come back in the evening, take him back home, and do the same thing day after day after day, after day. Can I suggest to you today, my brothers and sisters, that these two men who are not being mentioned in the text, can I tell you that they had their own agenda? And that they wasn't picking him up for nothing? It, it seems to me that they were getting something out of the deal. Be careful who you hang around because some folks hang around you just for what they can get from you. And I truly believe the only reason why they laid him at the gate every day, picked him up, and then took him back is because they were getting something out of the deal. If I had some real folk in here today, there's some things you won't do unless you're getting something out of the deal. And I truly believe that these gentlemen had an agenda. And really, this man was in the wrong company. And so he needed to be in the right company. So God sends 
two men by the name of Peter and John. These men are mentioned because these men are needed. But the ones not mentioned were the ones who were not needed. But here comes Peter and John on their way to the temple. Just as they do every day. And notice where they lay him. They lay him in a particular spot. Because it's at this spot where the priests and the big money changers, the big ballers come through this gate. And so he's not just at any gate, but he's at the big ballers gate. Somebody know what a big ball is. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's at the gate because he's at the place where he know money is coming. And so, so, so he's not there by accident. He's placed there for a reason. But then God understood that there was time for a change. When God looks at our life and recognizes that it's time for a change, he'll start sending different people your way. In fact, he's going to send some folk your way you don't even socialize with. But that's God's way of setting up his next chapter in your life. Peter and John coming to the gate. And he looks on it and expecting to receive something from them. But little did they know, quite evident, that he didn't know anything about Peter and John. Because Peter and John were disciples of Christ. And you know anything about Peter and John, they, they had left their jobs a long time ago. Uh, when, when Jesus accepted his call to ministry over three and a half years ago, they, they dropped their occupation. They put down their nets. They, they, they left their occupation as fishermen and they followed Jesus. And they've been following Jesus from the, from the time Jesus accepted them into the ministry up until now they've been following jesus so they, they don't have their daily occupation anymore so for for him to expect to receive something tangible from peter and john was really misconstrued because peter and john didn't have anything it's right there in the text because peter begins to begin to look on him and tell him listen listen silver and gold i don't have he says, but what I do have, he says, I offer it to you. Jesus knew that if there's going to be a change in this man's life, he no longer needed to hunger for what he wanted, but he needed to hunger for what he needed. Y'all need, just missed a place to shout there because what's wrong with the church today is that we're so into what we want that we forget that the God we serve is the supplier of our needs. Somebody missed another place to shout there because, listen, didn't he wake you up this morning? And I don't know about you, but you needed to get up this morning. You couldn't just get up on your own. When he woke you up this morning, it was because you needed to be awakened. And somebody needed to thank God that he took time out this morning to wake you up because you needed to get up. And somebody, since you got up, and while you here and you've been sitting here since you got here, can you just get up right now and thank God for getting you up? He was so into what he wanted that he never discovered what he really needed. And he became pacified by his want. The problem with the church today, and if there's going to be a change in the church, and I'm not talking about this physical building, I'm talking about our heart. If there's going to be a change in the church, we've got to stop wanting to be pacified. And we've got to learn that we need to grow up and become mature Christians in Christ. Listen, just because they said something about you, they don't give you any reason to say anything back to them. If they talk about you, start praying for them. When they stab you in the back, just pull the knife out. Put a bandage on it and go on about your business. Listen, you don't have to worry about an eye for an eye. Jesus said, vengeance is mine, save the Lord.
If we gonna grow up, we, we got to learn. Growing up causes change. And we've been pacified. Somebody talk about it. First thing we want to do is put a pacifier in their mouth. Instead of telling them the truth. And what's wrong with the church today? Is that we got our own little groups. That keep pacifying one another. On the back. When, when somebody over here needs to go to somebody over here and tell them the truth. Now, now don't give them a pacifier, but come from over here to go over there and tell them the truth. Not only do we want to pacify, but we, you know, pacifies, you know, babies cry. And to keep the baby from crying. Y'all know what, what you put a pacifier in his mouth to keep him from crying. It's just like that in the church. You know, people crying and, and, and they crying out for help. And all we want to do is give them a pacifier. But I come to tell you today, we need to start giving them the word of God. Because only the word of God can save. Only the word of God can change. We need to start pacifying one another. Instead of pacifying, how about praying? If we don't pacify them, then we give them a bottle. Some of us been sucking bottles in ministry for a long time. We, 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 we been on milk for 30 and 40 years. And if there's anybody in here that's that immature, that you can't handle somebody talking about you. You can't handle somebody lying on you. You can't handle trouble sometimes. You can't handle being sick sometimes. If you can't handle meeting your name on the wings of the morning, sometime, you, you need to understand you yet still on milk. But can I tell you what milk does? A baby can only have milk for so long. Because his teeth began to grow. Even when their teeth began to grow, some people still put them babies on bottles and they stay on it too long. If a child stays on a bottle too long, and their teeth have come in. One thing that happens with those baby teeth is they'll begin to decay. And begin to get weak and rot. And will ultimately die. Y'all missing it right here. The, the problem with most of us is the fact that we are already dead and don't know it. Because we've been drinking milk for 40 and 50 years. Preach Reverend Curry, I'm doing the best I can. It's, it's time to get off the bottle. Wean yourself off the ball. Listen, listen. If Jesus had to suffer, yes, sir. Come on. if they did it to a green tree, what makes you think we won't have trouble while we're living here on this earth? This man here was comfortable. He had been pacified since the day of his birth, but Jesus said it was time for a change. I come to tell you today, Macedonia, it's time for a change. We, we got to stop sucking bottles and, 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 and get pacifiers in our mouth. No, we got to stand on the word of God. Listen, when God been good to you, we, we, can't, we can't come into God's house and fold our arms up and act like we got here on our own. But when we enter into his gates, we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. There ought to be a praise on the inside before you came in the house that you just can't keep to yourself. Every now and then when a song is sung or a prayer is being prayed, somebody ought to just wave their hand and tell God thank you. Somebody ought to just strike out on the aisle and say, Lord, you've been good to me. Listen, you can't be quiet on a God like the God we serve. A change got to come. Peter said, listen, I know what you want, but the Lord sent me here because the Lord knows what you need. And that's what I'm glad about this morning, Macedonia, is that we serve a God that even though we have our wants, we serve a God that knows what we need. Can I get somebody here this morning? To just thank God that he is a supplier of all of our need. 
can I get somebody right here in Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church 106 Glass Street 38301 to just give God some glory because he supplies all of my need I may not have silver and gold I may not have a house on the hill I may not drive a Mercedes Benz but I serve a God I wonder if there anybody here that can just raise your hand and let your neighbor know I serve a God that supplies all of my need when I got up this morning I had a roof over my head can somebody give him glory I got up this morning I had bread on the table can I get somebody to thank God today that he's able to supply my need the Bible said Peter looked down on him and declared silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus rise and walk I come to tell you this morning if a change is gonna come Jesus got to be the center of your joy is there anybody here today that can declare in this place I've got Jesus living on the inside can I get somebody to help me celebrate Jesus if you know you got him on the inside find you a neighbor I feel like celebrating find you somebody put your arms around her and let your neighbor know I found somebody that rocks me when I get weary I found somebody that's a bridge over trouble water I found somebody that's able to bear my burden in the heat of the day I found somebody that went to Calvary Hill one Friday evening died from the sixth to the ninth hour and right early Sunday morning that man from Galilee that man hung bled and died Jesus of Nazareth he laid his hands on me is there anybody here today can declare before your neighbor tell your neighbor I got him I got him I got him I got him find your neighbor rock him and shake him shake him and rock him and said neighbor I got him I got him got him in my walk got him in my talk got him in my way I got him I got him shout yeah shout yeah they all right the Bible said that he reached down and grabbed him by the right hand which means not only did he need to rise and walk but he needed fellowship notice that the text says that he didn't grab him by the left hand but grabbed him by the right hand the right hand symbolized fellowship which mean he needed to have fellowship with Jesus Christ and the Bible said that he reached before and grabbed his hand and when he pulled him up the Bible said that his ankle bone received strength and he jumped up and the Bible said when he realized that he had been healed he started leaping and jumping and praising God don't miss a place to shout there but when he realized that he had been healed the Bible said that he was leaping and jumping and praising God when he realized that he could put one foot in front of the other he started leaping and praising God if you got up this morning you ought to be leaping and praising God if you were able to make it to the house of prayer one more time you ought to be leaving and praising God and the Lord all right notice in the text that he started praising him on the outside but he ended up on the inside he started out on the outside but ended up on the inside I stopped by to tell you just a little talk with Jesus 
will make it all right. Just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm better than this. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ that loved me. I'm at the top and not the bottom. Ain't the Lord all right? I need somebody to declare in this place I'm better than this. I can do better than the, with Jesus Christ. Ain't the Lord all right? Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. I'm better than this. I'm better. I'm better than this. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a lender and not a borrower. I'm a king and a priest. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare in this place, you're better than this. Can I get somebody to just declare in this place? I'm better than this. The God I serve has made me better. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Shout it, yeah! A need versus a want. Wants will cause you to be lazy. Wants will cause you to be comfortable. Needs. Requires some effort on your part. Church is time out for being lazy. And I'm not just talking about in the fellowship, in our home, on our job. One of the reasons why the generation behind us is so lazy is because we gave them everything. And then we got lazy. And all they saw was what we gave them. But Big Mama and Mom and Dad worked from sun up to sundown. In the heat of the day, Mama would work all day long. Just like daddy did. But when mama got home, she took the pots out the cabin. Went in the refrigerator and got what she needed to throw together to eat. Because she knew her work wasn't done just yet. We can't wait. Stop at McDonald's and Arby's. Can't wait to go to Taco Bell. But mama would work all day. Just as hard as daddy did. But when she got home, she put that meal together. Made sure everybody was fed. And then after everybody got fed, then she'd go get her a little bit. After everybody else had eaten. When are we going to stand up? Give these young folks something to truly look at. You don't know why they the way they are. We didn't give them a good example. We got lazy. We got pacified. And some of us still sucking bottles. And if you still sucking a bottle, what do you think these children going to do? They're going to be on the same bottle. When you put it down, they're going to pick it up. And then when they put it down, you're going to pick it up. Y'all ain't doing nothing but exchanging bottles. When you going to put the bottle away? And you're drinking more than you need now because you don't want the nipple out. The hole used to be small. You didn't, you've been on it so long, it's wide open. You better than that. You better than that. Status quo is not acceptable anymore. The way we used to do it is all right. And that's good. If you're not willing to grab hold of the torch and carry it for what it's worth, what good is talking about what we used to do? Not 
not only that, but what they used to do, that's what God had envisioned for them. That was a vision for the children of Israel to leave Egypt and get to the promised land. But it was also in God's plan that some of them that left Egypt, he knew that their hearts and their minds were still on Egypt. That's why they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Because that generation had to die. And it was the generation that was born in the wilderness that went over into the promised land. Because God had new vision for the wilderness children. Children of Egypt had to die right where they were. New generation moved forward. They conquered and received the promised land. Are you going to grab hold and receive your promised land? Offer your Christ today to the unsaved. To the unsaved, there may be somebody here today that does not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sin. If you're here today and you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, I want you to know today salvation can be made available unto you.